Before you begin, remember to place the clamp nut, washer, and gasket on the cable. Cut 0.375 inches of jacket. Make sure that the cut is square because the braid clamp has to be seated squarely against the cut end of the jacket. Slide braid clamp over the braid, being certain that the clamp seats squarely against the cut end of the jacket. RG214 cable has two layers of braid. Unbraid the first layer and comb out braid wires smoothly over the clamp. Notice that the interweaving of the braid is preserved. This will add maximum strength to the connector. And here's both layers folded back. Place the second washer over the cable's dielectric. Then Use the washer as a guide to cut the dielectric. Once a complete 360 degree cut has been made, you can use the knife to pry the dielectric off. Then use your hand to pull the dielectric straight off. Do not twist the dielectric as the center conductor is made up of multiple solid wires. Twisting the dielectric could cause them to come out of alignment. The center contact should sit square on the dielectric. Here there is a gap. Cut the center conductor to 0 0.203 inches. This length should allow the pin to sit square on the dielectric. Also, you should see the center conductor filling the entire solder hole of the pin. Next, take the insulator with a skirt on one side and a flat surface on the other side. The skirt faces the cable and is long enough to cover the small amount of dielectric protruding above the washer. Now the pin can be soldered onto the cable using heat tweezers. Before you use your heat tweezers, you want to make sure that they are clean. Clean your heat tweezers with 800 grit sandpaper.
before you begin soldering, add a little flux to the center conductor. Now the key to soldering with heat tweezers is to slowly apply the heat by using a pulsing action with the foot pedal. It takes some practice to do a good job, but you can start out by tapping the foot pedal slowly to bring the heat up a little faster until you see the first sign of the flux boiling and melting of the solder. Then bring the heat up faster until enough solder has liquefied. Then slowly bring down the heat and let the pin cool. Once soldering is complete, use an X-Acto knife to shave off any solder that was left on the outside of the pin. Then use your fingernail to ensure that there are no solder grooves on the outside of the pin. Next, trim the braid so that it does not fall over the ridge of the clamp. However, try to leave as much braid as possible. Now here is the second insulator. It has a short and a long skirt. You have the short skirt here and the long skirt here. There's the short skirt and there's the long skirt. The long skirt of the second insulator will face the first insulator and cover the portion of the pin between the two insulators. Now slide the gasket onto the clamp. Make sure it's seated properly. Now, place the body of the connector onto the cable. And make sure the cable is all the way in. Slide the washer into the body. Slide the clamp nut up to the body. And use two wrenches to tighten the clamp nut onto the body. To ensure for correct pin depth, a connector gauge for n-type connectors can be used. To set up the gauge, take the gauge standard and push it on the plunger. Loosen the gauge dial and adjust it so that the needle reads zero. When the standard is removed, the needle, in this case, is offset by two one-thousandths of an inch. This does not matter. 
the measurement being made is a relative measurement. When making a measurement, the needle should be within plus minus 20 thousandths of an inch with respect to zero. This brand new connector is well within this spec on one end and just meets the spec on the other end. Now let's see how the cable turned out. Not bad. That's acceptable. 